So when you first open Max, this is what it looks like. And I'm, the first thing I'm going to do is change the, uh, the user interface for the color. I like to go with a dark background. And that was simply, I just went under Customize. And the reason I, I switched to dark uh, is really because in Max we're working with uh, creating renderings, and we're trying to uh, trying to get a good idea of lighting levels and color correction. And if if you're in a dark room working with photography, you want to be able to look at those colors without any of the other colors affecting uh, what you're looking at. So we're looking at a dark environment. So this is what I like to work with. So the import is very simple. We're going to go to uh, this this jewel icon up here, Max icon, and then we're going to say import. And we're going to choose Import. And we're going to go to our exercise files. And we're going to go to our SketchUp file. And we choose Texture. And this is a SketchUp file. And you say Open. And when you click Open, it's going to ask for several things. You can actually you can import all the scenes that you create from SketchUp. You can import as cameras. Uh, the the sun angle that you had in SketchUp. If you had uh, your sun on, you can import your sun. Uh, and you can also split objects by layers. So I don't typically split objects by layers, uh, so I'll turn that off. And the cameras, I'm going to, we can go ahead and import cameras. We'll keep the cameras. The daylight system, I'm going to add my own daylight system in Max. So we'll do that. And then uh, skip hidden objects. If there are any objects you have hidden, if this is on, it means that they're not going to import. So typically this is what I like to have because if I have my SketchUp file, and I set it the way I wanted it to look, this is how I want to import it into Max as well. And then this right here is where we're going to import the materials. And so just choose the folder that you want to import it to. And we're going to go to our, uh, our desktop folder, extra, extra size files. And we're going to choose textures. And we're going to import it to that folder. So just say OK. And then, and then you just hit OK. And what it's doing now is it's importing the, uh, the SketchUp file. It's taking all the textures from the SketchUp file, and then it's also applying uh, the mental ray uh, materials to those, to those materials from SketchUp. Right now, here's our scene, and you can see it imported all of our cameras, and we're zoomed out really far, and the reason is because our camera targets are, are out into infinity, and so we can, ch we can play with that and change those. So if we zoom in the, uh, the middle mouse wheel, it, it works a lot like uh, SketchUp, where you can click down, and it'll pan, and if you scroll it, it'll zoom in and out. Uh, and so if you uns right now everything's selected. If you just click somewhere else, it'll unselect everything. If you hold Alt in the middle mouse button, that'll help you to tumble. So you can tumble around, much like that. Um, and if you want to go to a different view, you can hit Alt W or this button right here, which is the Maximize Viewport toggle. So if you hit Alt W, it'll toggle your viewport. And we're going to choose a top view. And we're going to hit Alt W again, select the top view, hit Alt W, and we're going to zoom into our house. And there it is from the top view. And one thing I like to do to make things easier to see, I want to turn the grid off. An easy way to do that is just hit G on your keyboard. If you hit G, it turns your grid off. It's very easy. So here are all your cameras. And the first thing I'm going to do is actually change the camera targets. So you can see that some of them are way out into infinity. So we're going to play with those and bring them back in. The easiest way to do that is just select your camera. And these are actually your cameras from, uh, from SketchUp. So, uh, so we have all of our scenes that are, have imp been imported to cameras. What it doesn't always know is the distance of a target. Since SketchUp doesn't have a target in your Scenes tab, Max just creates a target for you. So select your camera, select the Modify tab, and scroll down here so you get target distance. So this is the distance that your target is. You'll see that it's an arbitrary distance. And so what we're going to do is we're going to change the units of our, of our scene file. Right now it's just it's, uh, it's in units, which is you know, a, a generic figure. So we're going to go to Custom, and then Unit Setup. And I like to work uh, with US standard format. And typically, I'll work with feet with decimal inches max, and I'll choose my my default units instead of feet, I like to use inches. Okay, And then this is for lighting analysis. We won't really use this, but uh, I'll switch it to American. And we'll hit OK. So now you'll see this is my target distance. And it's telling me that my distance is uh, 
239 feet. So we can, we can bring it back. If you just click and hold down this, uh, your mouse button, you can scroll this cursor right here. We're going to bring it back until it's in a relatively uh, close proximity to the house. So we're going to do that with all the, the cameras. So now this is the other camera. We're going to bring that in. And you may find sometimes you, you may have a hard time uh, selecting your cameras. One thing that's easy to do is to change your selection type. You can change it from all, which means it's going to select any type of object in your scene to uh, cameras. And if you choose cameras, it's going to filter it so it's only going to select your cameras. So if you're having a hard time clicking on that camera and you're selecting a house, now you're, you're only going to be able to select cameras. You just have to remember to switch that back when you're done working with your cameras. So we've got some of these that are way out. So we'll pull this one back. And you may be wondering, well, wh what's the importance of pulling back your target? It's, it has to do with uh, depth of field when you render. And we're not necessarily, we're not going to render depth of field straight into max, but it's usually a good practice to pull those targets back. Even when you, when you zoom, zoom out and hit Z on your scene, it'll make it a lot easier to manage. So we're going to pull that back. You get some, some of those crazy targets. And this one, it's, uh, and you see that it's even named by the SketchUp scenes. So we'll pull these back. So pull that one back. And typically, a good distance is is right where the end of your room is. So that's where a lot of these are a little different from each other. OK, so now that we've got our targets where we want them, we can, uh, we can actually go through our views. If you hit C on your keyboard, you can see all the cameras, and you can select uh, whichever camera you want to go to. So this is on the inside. And right now, you can't really see anything because uh, it's all shaded. We can change it from realistic mode to shaded here. And now you'll be able to see what we're looking at. And it's very similar to. Uh, the shots that we had uh, from SketchUp. And you'll see that all the materials came in and they're all, uh, they're all uh, textured. And even the UVs of the textures are in the right direction. So it gives us a lot more to work with. It gives us less work to do in Max because we already did in SketchUp. And you may have to play with some of your camera angles. So let's take a look at what some of these, uh, some of these are doing. Because the cameras came in from SketchUp, they may not be quite in the right spot. So you may have to adjust them slightly in max, which is fine. Here's a camera that I selected. And this is the space we're going to try to look at. 